Okay, so we're just gonna do this quickly. We're gonna do one slow-mo and the regular speed one. Okay. Okay, let's switch this thing into slow-mo. So we just go down to 1080p and then over to 120 frames per second. Oh, it's, it's a little dark. Okay, let's just open this up. No, he's struggling again. Every time he changes frame rates, all you have to do is multiply your frame rates by two. Oh yeah, I have to put my shutter speed up. Double 120 is 240, there we go, okay. Okay, let's just do one more regular speed. Okay. So we'll just go take it out of 1080 up to 4K, and I guess we're ready to go. Oh, why does this look so weird? Why does this motion look so choppy? Oh no, I've been shooting 24P at a 240th of a second. Why does this have to be so goddamn difficult? You shoot it! Welcome back to Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here with another one of our midweek shorter episodes. Okay, in these ones, we just like to cover a small feature on a camera or maybe a little bit of education. And tonight, we're gonna to be talking about why shutter angles are superior to shutter speeds, at least when video is concerned. Now, the first thing we have to cover is what are shutter angles? We we're really going back to the days of analog motion picture cameras. Now the first thing that you have to understand is we have a roll of film passing through the camera in constant motion and it's going to be at a certain frame rate. Now for the purpose of our discussion tonight, let's just deal with a classic 24 frames per second. That means in one second of time there are 24 frames of film passing through the camera. And you have a shutter mechanism which is actually adjusted with angles of degrees. Tighter angles meaning slivers of light, faster shutter speeds, and larger angles meaning more light, slower shutter speeds. And this would expose every frame of that film. Now in order to explain this analog technology even further, I have now created my own analog devices. So this representation is what we would call a 360 degree shutter where it's open for the full 360 degrees of this gate. It means that the film is getting exposed the entire time with light and so if that film is going through at 24 frames per second, each exposure is equivalent to 1 24th of that second. If I had that film going through at 30 frames per second, then it would be equivalent to 1 30th of a second. And what this does to the look of our movie, that slow shutter speed allows more motion blur than we would normally see with our own eyes when we see the world around us. So you'd actually get this very weird, ethereal, dream kind of like effect. It could be a lot of fun, but it's not one that we use very often. So if a 360 degree shutter exposes the film the entire time, let's take a look at our next most commonly used angle, 180 degrees. Now when I spin this, you can very clearly see that we're now getting half the exposure that we did before. Now what does this mean? Well, if before I was getting in 24 frame per second movie, 24th of a second, this is going to double the speed of that shutter. We're getting half the light. 24th of a second becomes 48th of a second. We get less light, but what does this do for our movie? It gives everything a much more natural semblance of motion, very similar to how we see the world with our own eye. Now, if you want further explanation on that, definitely check out the video that we did on video exposure and how that all works. You'll get more detail there. But let's go to our last shutter angle that we would normally use. That's the 90 degree shutter. All right, so there it is, our final example, the 90 degree shutter. And I think as you can clearly see, now we're only getting a quarter of the light of a 360 degree shutter. And this means exactly what we've been kind of building up to, an even faster shutter speed and less light. So how does this affect our video and our movies? Well, basically it's gonna give everything a more energetic, intense kind of feeling. It's very popular for fight scenes and it's also very popular for war movies and things like that. But it's also crept its way in today's modern video world where people tend to just shoot at fast shutter speeds without even knowing it. The problem is if you're shooting something that isn't war or isn't a fight scene, my hands moving will have a very strange, hyper-realistic and very distracting look to them. It's something that we always try to avoid. In fact, the real name of the game for most of our footage is gonna be using 180 degree shutters. We only rarely use 90 or 360 when we want that kind of creative effect. But let's move to the digital era because we're not using rotating gates with metal angles anymore. We're using photographic shutter speeds for the most part. So if I want that very classic 180 degree shutter look, I take that frame rate, 24 frames per second, 
I times it by two, and I get the shutter speed that'll get me closest to 48th of a second, and so on and so forth. This does represent a problem though. First off, you gotta do math. Nobody likes to do that. Second thing you have to do, you have to remember what math you're supposed to do for what look you want for your video. And the third problem, as you saw in our intro, what happens when you start changing frame rates all the time, maybe from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second because you want to do a slow-mo look? Well, you have to remember to do the math and then you have to remember to reset it when you go back to your original frame rate. Okay, so let's bring this all back to our original discussion. Why are shutter angles superior to shutter speeds when it comes to video? Well, first off, keep in mind that many modern digital cinema cameras use shutter angles, but in the mirrorless market, it's few and far between. We love the Panasonic GH5 and GH5S. They do give us the option to set things in shutter angles, but Otherwise, with many of the other cameras on the mirrorless market, especially the ones upping their video game, you're gonna have to go back to doing the math. We'd love to see them update to shutter angles because what that does is allow the camera to automatically manage all that math for you. Whatever frame rate I'm in, if I choose 180 degrees shutter on my camera, it'll automatically choose the appropriate shutter speed to give me that look. Jordan, for example, has had his camera set on 180 degrees, he has not changed changed it since the day he opened the box, except to do the 360 and 90 degree angle examples for this very video, okay? Now, can you still go the old fashioned route and set the appropriate shutter speed yourself? You absolutely can, but hopefully you guys can now see the benefit of having that angle degree shutter built into the camera's menu. All right, thanks so much for joining us for another little short educational video. For the 10,000 of you that watch this, we know that you really appreciate them. But please don't forget, check out Instagram, check out Twitter, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Leave your comments below, subscribe.